this Excel tutorial, us at Computer Tutoring going to have a look at data tables for what-if analysis in Excel 2016. In fact, I've got Excel 365, 365. It looks like I've just got an update here. Just look at the top here. You can see I've got all nice little colors for the conditional formatting and formatters table. It looks just a tiny little bit different there. So excited to get to use that as well. However, the what-if analysis or data tables for what-if analysis has been around since around 2000. And seven. I might be wrong, might be a little earlier, but it's been around for a few years. But uh, well, if you're in 2016, you can use that. Now, what can we use it for? Well, basically, um, just so I can really explain this, I've done an example just so you can see what you can get out of this. So, for instance, here I've got a payment function, which or a repayment function that basically is cross referencing. If I just move myself out of the way, this list of cars here. Uh, and so what I can do is I can click on a drop down list of cars and say if I choose a Ford, so the Ford is 10,000, it's using a little VLOOKUP to cross reference that. Then I've got the APR just in here, uh, which is the 5% and 36, which makes this amount just here. But what I want to do is I want to look at different eventualities for that. You know, say for instance, if I pay, you know, I mean, have a 3% a, a APR or uh, a four percent APR. Well, what I can do is I can create a data table here that allows me to have a look at different payment uh, methods in one matrix here. So, for instance, the five percent I don't actually have on this one here. Let me just change this. If I change that at the top to, let's start off with um, two point five percent, two point five percent. There we go. So that's two hundred eighty-eight pounds. But if I look at um, £288.61 I'll pay a month. So if I look across to 2.5% and I have a look down to 36, 288 pounds there and 61p. Now if you look very closely, if you click anywhere on these cells and just look in the uh, can I double click on that? Yes I can. But in fact it's better to see up here in the formula bar. If you look very closely at the formula, locus those notice those little braces around the formula. So there, that those braces denote that this is an array formula. So when we type this formula or we use the what if data analysis, that's what we do. Uh, so a couple of other things just to be aware of as well. Uh, this drop down list is picking up what they call a named range from formulas under named manager. I've got a few names ranges going on here. I've got a table, but um, this one here, the car list is using a named range here offset. So uh, that's a nice function. You're going to very briefly just copy and paste and uh, go through this um, function. Just going to copy and paste so it works. But there will be another training source or training video or tutorial using the offset function. So just so you know about that. So let's get started. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to start a brand new Excel spreadsheet. What I'm just also going to do is just drag that one over to my other screen so I can make sure that what I create is going to be similar to that. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is let's create our little payment function. So just at the top here, I'm just going to highlight across to uh, row M and do a merge and center and type in the loan repayments. What if analysis? Analysis. That's fantastic. Uh, what I can do here is I can make it bold and make it bigger as well and just drag it down a bit and use these alignment buttons just at the top here if I want to sort of align it up and make it all look pretty. So let's put in the function here. So over on the left hand side, I'm just going to type in some headings. So choose car, uh, amounts, APR, periods in months. There we go. Let's just make that a little wider. Brilliant, and I'm just going to type in something to start off with. So I'm going to type Ford, 10,000, 2.5 percent, and a period 36 months. That's great. I'm just going to format that as pounds and pence just at the top. Dollars and cents if you're using, um, well, if you're in America and US or any country that uses dollars. Notice that the format is accounting here, uh, just to confuse you all basically but uh, this is their pounds and pens and we just align in fact I'll align all these ones uh, to the right hand side there great so what I'm going to do now is I just stay down for instance on cell C9 just here I'm just going to put the payment function in so to insert the payment function uh, let me just zoom in a little bit here so you can see and I can type in the PMT function so you can see that just there so it will be equals PMT first thing is the rate so let's go up here so the rate is C5, 
So that's where the 2.5% is. I'm going to divide that by 12 because I'm making 12 payments per year. So if I was making quarterly payments per year, I would put a 4 in there. Then a comma for the next argument. Next argument you can see is number of payments. I'm going to click on C6 because it's 36 payments. Then I'll do a comma. And then the present value is going to be C4, which is going to be 10,000. So what I'm going to do is press Enter here, and you can see I've got a figure. It comes up with a minus figure there. So because the PMT, or payment function, returns a minus figure. So I'm just going to rectify that just by going back into the formula here, clicking just before the C4, and adding a little minus just before the C4 there. And when I press Enter there, I can see I get a positive figure, since it's something that I'm looking for. All right, then, so let's get this data table in here. I'm just going to create some of the numbers. So for instance, the months are going to come down here. So I'm going to type in a couple of months. I'm going to type in 12 and 24. Highlight both of those and also fill that down to 72. And then across the top, I'm going to put 1% and 1.5%. If I highlight both of those and use the increase um, decimal button just at the top, the increase decimal, if you need to use that just so I can uh, increase. It is increase plus decimal. I always get those two, the de increase and the decrease one mixed up there. But it is the increase decimal. I'm just highlighting those two and I'm going to go across to four. Uh, right in the way here, let's just move myself down here, 4%, that's great. So here's the beginning of my data table. So what I do is, now to create this, is I, is I highlight the matrix, basically, or I highlight basically this table. So including the formula, the formula that it's going to use as the basis for the data table, and the rows and the columns, basically there. All right, then. It's kind of weird there, but this is the row and this is the column. So what do I do next? So I click on data just at the top here. So click on um, data. And then we're going to go all the way across and we're going to click on what if. Oops. We're going to click on what if analysis just there. So we're going to go to what if analysis. And then we're going to there, go down to and click on data table just there. So if we do that. So these two little functions that are available or two inputs that are required, the row inputs. So that is the row where the rows will be, you know, so this will be this one just here, okay? And then the column input, so you've got the column input, oops, so the column inputs cell here, that one will be where the columns will be, so that will be this one here. So basically which of these cells represents the rows, which represents the columns. So the percentages are in the row at the top, so that's going to be the row inputs, and then the period, you can see the period of months, that will be in the column cells there. So hopefully that makes sense a little bit. I've just been looking around. It's always a bit confusing, confusing but uh, if it doesn't work one way, you can swap it and work and do it the other way. So row, row input cell in this instance is going to be um, C5 because that's where the percentages are across the top. It doesn't really matter what this percentage is here. It just knows it needs to know which one is going to be across the top. And the column is going to be the period, which is this one here in the calculation. Click on OK, and then I get my results. What I just need to do just to make a little bit more sense of that, I'm just going to highlight that and change the format into accounting, which I have just done there. And now you can see certain amounts there. That's great. Brilliant. So what I can do here is basically I want to change the amount. So if I take 12,000 in and I can press Enter, I can see my amounts change. Just adjust the width of the column so I can, yeah. If I type in 20,000, I can see the amounts change. There you go, I'm making 577 on the basis of this formula here. But if I look and I decide to change or look at the variations of the options, if I'm playing 3% over 36 months, it's 581 pounds. So instead of me having to type in all these formulas here and change this to 3%, or changes to 48 months, I can instantly see with a data table all of the variations. That's great. So far, so good. Now, further to that, I added just a few things, like a drop-down menu to help things out a little bit. So what I'll do is I will over here, I can't believe, I think I put it over in L, make this a little narrower over here, and then over in L here, I'm going to type in this drop-down menu. So I'm going to type in cars, uh, I'm going to type in costs, Okay, this will also be the basis for my VLOOKUP as well. So let's just type in some cars available. So I've got sort of BMW at 20,000. I'll tell you what I'll do is I'm just going to highlight all of 
few cells down there and make that pounds and pence. So I've got Ford at 10,000. Oops. Uh, what have I got? Merck. I'm just pressing enter after each. Merck tab, 22,000. Oops, 22 million. <laughs> That's a bit, uh, 220,000 rather. That'll probably be an SLR or something like that. There we go. 22,000. Okay, uh, Hyundai. I'm spelling that right. If I'm not, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, was that 11,000? And let's say Vauxhall, 9,000. Uh, Kia, uh, 12,000. And you don't have to type all of these ones in if you don't want to, you can fast forward. But uh, I said that we would reproduce the other one as closely as we can. So I will do a couple more. Jeep at 11,000 and VW at 20,000. There we go, brilliant. So we've got these ones here like so. Uh, so a couple of things that we're going to do with this. First thing, I'm going to make up a named range to help me with my V lookup. If you haven't seen named ranges, then keep an eye out for a named range video. I think I've got an, uh, one on there. Okay, so what I need to do is I'm going to give this one a named range here. It'll help me out a little bit. So I'm just going to select cars cost down and a few, few down just so I can put a lot more cars in. Just at the top left-hand corner, I'm going to call the named range cars. Press enter. So at the top left-hand corner just here, Whenever I type in cars, that will select that named range. Just give you a quick example of that. So I'm clicking over here and something. I click on the drop down list and I choose cars. You can see it selected this and it's got room for more cars there. If I need to edit that for any reason at all, I can go to formulas just at the top, just here. Um, click on formulas and then I can click on this name. To just move myself out of the way. Uh, here we go. Name manager just here. Okay, I can move myself out of the way afterwards. Just getting used to this zooming option. All right, let's go to the back bottom right hand corner. Let's see if we can start creating a drop down list. Uh, well, first let's do the V lookup and then we can create a drop down list for this one here. So the V lookup is this one here. I'm going to type in equals V lookup. It's going to look at this here, the C3, comma. It's then going to cross reference it with cars. See, I've typed cars in here. What I can also do is under the formulas tab here, I can use this button here that says use in formula. And then what that allows me to do is I can then choose cars and then I can use the name range. That's if you've got some difficulty remembering the named ranges. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to bring back the cost, which is in column number two. It's in the second column over there and I need to find an exact match. So I'm gonna type in false. Now that's great. So now it's looking across here and it's looking across to this uh, cost column. And the beauty of this is now I just need to change BMW here. It changes to 20%, it, chain, um, it changes to 20,000 rather, and then you can see the data table updating at the bottom. If I change to Merck, I can then see that's a little bit more expensive. Now, last thing we're going to do before we also make it all look pretty as well, and I'll do that one at the end just because sometimes you just want to concentrate on the complicated formulas. We want to do a drop down list. I'm just going to move myself over here, get myself out of the way a little bit. Um, so let's just do our drop down list. So first thing I want to do is I want to do a named range for this one, but I don't want, you see the problem is, is if I click here, and if you want to do a named range, uh, so if you wanted to do um, a drop down list first without a name range, it's not a problem at all. But if you go to data and then you go to data validation just here, you will create a list, not a problem, clicking source. And you highlight the whole list here like that. And you've got ones at the bottom or you might put L at the top. Oops, that was not going to work, but say for instance, like so. Then when you click on OK, that's great. So when you get your drop down list, you've got lots of these blanks at the bottom. And there's certain ways of getting around that as well. But basically, and you're mucking around with this, you're going to get those blanks at the bottom. So how do you get rid of them? Well, you're going to do that by getting um, and putting in the named range, okay? And I'll give you the formula that you can copy and paste in, and hopefully we'll see, I'll get that formula in the comments below. Uh, also, I'll give you the link to uh, the computer tutoring site, the specific page on the site, where you can download this very exercise file when once it's completed, and then you can match it up to see if yours works uh, with that. All right, so how do we go ahead and do that one there? So first thing we need to do is let us just uh, clear that validation so I just want to have none on that one there so I'll just say any value that's great gets rid of the drop down list I'm then going to go to formulas at the top I'm uh, going to go to name manager okay just in here uh, I've got my cars one here I'm just going to do a new one and then the cars I'm just going to put it car list 
and that's fine. And where it refers to, I'm just going to paste in the formula. Okay, I'm pasting it working. Oh, okay. Let's type it in old school. So the formula is offsets, open bracket. Uh, so we're on sheet one. So I'm going to type in our sheet one, exclamation mark. And then we're going to put dollar L dollar three, because we're going to start off with the third row. That's the first uh, part of the offset. Put zero, zero for those other two there. And then we want to count down. So it's going to be count A and then sheet one again. Uh, exclamation mark. We'll have a dollar L colon dollar L. We want to do it basically the whole sheet. That's it. Close off that brackets there. Then we want to minus one because it has one extra down here. We want it to go up one. Okay. So then we comma uh, there, then have a one. That's great. And we should be able to click on OK. And then we've got this new one here. So let me just zoom in so you can see that because it is quite complex here. So we've got equals offset sheet one. Then from row three uh, there, so we're going to have no columns that are going across. We just want to go down rows to the count of whatever this is minus one. Uh, we might have to adjust it a little bit, but let's just give that one a go, you know, see how it works. So I'm going to click on close. That's fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use this car list in our drop down menu. So what we'll do is go up to data, data validation, data validation, go to our list, that's here. And then in our source, I go to formulas because I can't remember the name of the uh, named range. So using formula and I choose, uh, it's called car list, but it doesn't matter at all. So car list, click on OK. Yeah, that's great. So now when I click on the drop down list here, I've got Ford to VW. That's fine. I can click on VW. You can see all of these updates, which is great. But the beauty of this is I can click at the end here and I can add an extra car in. So a Jag, and then that's quite expensive. So let's say that's 30,000. There we go. So now I've got my Jag of 30,000. So I can click on the drop down list and it's including Jag. No more, no less. Of course, my payments seem to be quite high. You know, I can go in and add as many as I want, you know, here. Tesla. 50,000, yeah, it's starting to, starting to mount up, isn't it? But now I can click on the drop down list at the top and I've got Tesla in here. So I'll put that offset function and I'll put it on our website as well. Put some details at the bottom of the video, should be hopefully they're there now. And I'll also put them in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube as well. Great, I think that's about it really with this. Um, just a couple of extra things if you wanted to make this all look pretty. Uh, of course, you can do so uh, there. So I've um, just got a little sort of heading at the top where I do stuff like merge and center this here um, for the, you know, interests. So that's the interest there. And then over on the left-hand side, well, this is the monthly. Um, um, yeah, so it's like a monthly payments. And then maybe you've got the amount just down here. I can merge and center and I can type in amounts. Uh, control enter if you want to sort of press enter and keep in the same cell. Quite a nice, like, handy little feature. Uh, just going to put it onto the side here and then center align that one, the amount here. Uh, what else have we got there? Uh, yeah, we're changing the colors as well. So if I change this one here, hold down the control key, click down here as well. I can change background colors. I can choose it to cut a light or a color like so. These ones here, down to here, I can change the background colors to a dark blue, to white text. And then here, these ones just here, oh, my face is in the way, but it should be okay. Oops, there we go. And I can use a border, several borders here. And I think I have monthly payments across the bottom just here. Merging center, monthly payments, um, control enter, and then I just did a that type of thing. Uh, one little handy thing. Um, what else did we do with this one? Oh yeah, I think we had this here on the left hand side was a lightish color. So I could probably do the format painter. Um, oops, sorry, here, click on format painter and choose these. So it just copies the colors. Um, say for instance, I wanted to have different types of border lines in there. I think you, if you recall from the last one, that's what we had. So I can click on the drop down list and choose maybe more borders and then choose like thick lines from the top and the bottom and maybe little thinner lines uh, for the middle just here click on OK and you can see the lines that are appearing here starting to come together uh, and last but not least it's nice little I, I think I originally did this as a table 
Um, just to save, what, yeah, what I think I'll do here is just do this as a normal heading, just dark and light, and then you can use the Format Painter, uh, if I just change that to a light color, to have alternate rows. So if I highlight both of these here, I can go to the Format Painter just at the top, click once on the Format Painter, select the rest of these ones down, you know, and then you can see that changes. I suppose the beauty of creating a table out of that one is that when you add values to it, it's um, it automatically changes the colors, etc. But uh, see if I just go over here and add the next one here, which is Ferrari. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. One hundred thousand. Ah, she's working fine. There we go. And now I can click on the drop down list and choose. Well, let's move myself out of the way. Drop down list at the top and go full hog with the Ferrari. Wow, if I'm paying off for that in 12 months, I could buy, wow, <laughs> so many Ford Focuses uh, a month for just the Ferrari there in the year. So I hope that's helped. So just in a recap, this is what-if analysis, using data tables for what-if analysis. That's the main thing. But just so you can get something out of this, um, so you can see in a practical way what you can do with it by creating some sort of this this type of dashboard just here. So what I'll tell you I'll do is I will actually, I think that's absolutely perfect, absolutely fine. So the last thing I do is just to save it. So let's save that. I'm going to save it. I'll put it up on our website. I'll put the link down at the bottom. Um, and also um, I'll put the, um, the um, that formula, the offset formula on our website as well as, as, well as with the links at the bottom. Nothing more to say. Please subscribe. Just give this a like. If you've got anything out of that, just click on that little like button just at the bottom. You can't see me there. Just click on that little like button. It means so much. Um, you know, keep up those dopamine levels for myself. Uh, that'd be good. And um, the next one we're going to do, we're going to have a look at the transpose. It's a nice um, function I saw on when conducting an advanced Excel training course. One that just came across called transpose, uh, which is is a pretty nifty function. So, last thing to say is thank you so much for watching.